Welcome back to B Varsity Live. Zach Ewing and Trevor Horn here with uh, three more track standouts. No, no school theme this time, unfortunately. But we we have uh, we have Ben Hibbert of Frontier, Curtis Ralkeld North, and Julianne Finch from Garces. Guys, welcome in. Uh, thanks for being here. And and again, we'll tremendous. Call it the North Side Crew. There you, you go. Think about it. I like that. There you go. Straight and, across. And uh, and tremendous accomplishments for all of them already this year with with possibly more to come. Ben, you are number one in the section in the 110 hurdles, looking to defend your title there in the section. Uh, Don't hopefully, trip this time. Yeah, hopefully without sir. falling over the finish line this time, right? You'll never live that down as long as you live. Oh, man, I get comments about that every day. <laughs> <laughs> a 14.40. Uh, now, was that wind dated? That looks yeah, like... It yeah, so okay. So, uh, scratch it. doesn't count. No, I, I, I kind of feel weird about those wind dated things. You still ran it, right? I mean... I mean, I felt pretty fast. Yeah, wind or not, so you still did count. it. Yeah. Four, 14.40 and there, there go our peepers over there again peeping over the top of the wall that leads into our green room i guess that's the thing to do now you're also number five in the 300 hurdles of 40.37 uh curtis you are number one in the 800 154 64 looking to follow in isaac trevino's footsteps from last year i know you were, you were pretty close to him last year frankly and uh and then julianne you are number three in this section in the pole vault 12 feet even um now ben let's start with you how are you feeling? Um, how's how's the season going? Is it uh, is it a grind at this point? I mean, I know as sometimes as a senior, you get the senioritis creeping in or whatever. I don't know that applies to track, but how are you feeling at this at this stage? Uh, I feel a lot better this week than I have in the past few weeks. That's for sure. Um, like you said, I ran that fourteen forty wind dated. That was a really high point of my early season. And then I don't know. I've had to like through West Coast and stuff. I kind of struggle. I just wasn't. I wasn't finding my technique. I wasn't running right. In these last few weeks in practice, we've me and my coach have really strapped down on the film and like broken it down and figured out what what I'm changing. I think so. I think tomorrow should be a different race, better you're, race. You're predicting me. good things for tomorrow, right? I'm hoping for good. Ho things. Hoping for good things. We'll, we'll predict them for you. <laughs> Go ahead, Curtis. For you, um, and I don't want to knock any coaching staff whatsoever, but for you to be able to get in contact with. Uh, Vondre Armour over at Centennial and really kind of talk to him and gauge how you're going to do in the 800, really kind of learn the techniques of running the 800. Um, how much how much influence does he have on you now as you kind of hone yourself after being a gifted athlete to somebody that really now understands how to run the 800 properly? Um, he's helped me a lot, um, especially from the day one I stepped on track this season. Uh, he talked to me and then the next week, um, I'm training with him, and if it's really good. He's teaching me all about it, and he's showing me all the mental for the game, for running around for the 800. Because most of the race, you got to be smart and um, you got to run it right, and that's what he's teaching me every day. So, but so it's more tactics than necessarily anything physical. Yeah, um, I mean, sometimes it gets physical at the start, but that's about it. And then after that, you got to just run the smartest race. I, when he told you to walk the 800 for the first time. What went through your mind? Because this is the one thing that Vondre always talks about. I remember Vondre was four-time All-Area Runner of the Year for us back in the 90s. State champion, yeah. A state champion, went on to Arizona State. He understands. He coached Isaac up into it last year. Um, first time he ever told you, hey, we're going to walk the 800, what went through your mind? Because that's one of his big coaching techniques. Uh, I was really confused about walking <laughs> the 800. But I liked it because I was like, we're walking the 800 at practice. That means we're not working that hard. <laughs> But when he but mentally you are when he quit when he asks me questions I mean they're hard questions and I have to answer them and I mean I answer them in a different way but it's just it's the right way so. and that right there too Zach when you think about it that's what makes Bakersfield so unique is that you get a coach from a rival high school that says yes I will take time to help him out because I understand that I want him to be better or that you know whatever sure. it is and that's also what makes track and field a very unique sport too the community kind of galvanizes yeah, exactly. yeah absolutely uh julian i mentioned earlier that the pole vault just amazes me i do, i just don't understand how you do i mean it's like so acrobatic i would kill myself the first time i have no doubt about it uh how did you how do you get into something like that um well when i was younger i used to do gymnastics see i thought you might have said that because a lot yeah. of people sure. yeah for a lot of people that's the springboard and yeah. then and then it just grew from there mm -hmm. well I never even thought about pole vaulting. I didn't even know what it was when I was eighth grade. It was about eighth wow. grade, and my mom was like, I was trying to find a sport, and I pretty much did everything after I quit gymnastics. And my mom was like, you know what? I think you should try pole vaulting. And so then I was like, okay. And then 
What she, did you think the first time you went out there? I mean, oh, I was horrible. I wanted to quit. <laughs> like I was so bad, I could barely even jump off the ground. And my mom was like, "You've only been doing it for like a month or so. Like, just keep going for it. Like, maybe you'll get better and stuff." And then. I don't know, eventually I got better. And then I remember my first meet, she told my brother, because they couldn't go, because they had to go out of town for some reason. Mm -hmm. And they told my brother, they're like, you know what, just be happy if she clears the bar. She probably won't even do that good, but, like... Wait, wait, they said this within earshot of you? Like, you heard him say that? No, but okay. they told my brother <laughs> that, and then my mom <laughs> like, told me, like, later on in my life, yeah. in my high school career, when I got better... And she was just like, you know, I just don't expect anything out of her. Like, just yeah. be happy if she clears, like, a foot or something. <laughs> and then I ended up clearing, I think, seven, six, eight feet, one of those. And I got second at the meet. Wow. And so I was like. And now here yeah. she is clearing 12 feet and headed to Cal State Bakersfield. You signed this week. Um, that moment in itself, kind of understanding that you're going to be able to continue, you know, athletically and academically. Um, how big a moment was that for you to, to, to be able to sign and know that next four years of your life were kind of set? It was a great moment, and it was a lot of stress went away because my biggest issue this season was, like, where am I going to sign? And then I need I want to clear 12 feet, and then, yeah. And so now you're just, kinda, cut, you're just living life yeah, happy, right? Yeah, now I'm just right? like, you know what? I have not, like, nothing can go wrong. I already have my college set. I'm going there. Nothing can go wrong. And you got the 12 feet, so it's it's all gravy now, right? Hey, Zach, I want to out Ben and his brother right now because there is something that I've always thought about since I moved in about how identical the two of them are even at – are you guys 18 now? Yeah. Okay, so even at the age of 18, how identical they are. And we were kind of hanging out, waiting for Arcadia to start on day one while the decathlon was going on. And I don't know why I waited this long to ask. I'm going to ask David Gaeta the same thing. I was like – have you ever switched them in a meet? Oh, they told us last year right here on this set they did that. Did they? Did yeah. You? I, I don't remember saying that. I, I don't remember them saying that. Maybe. Wait, you're Ben, right? I am Ben. I think I'm Ben, yeah. Okay. <laughs> See, I think there you're you Ben, go. too, I but I'm, I'm not right sure. Right. <laughs> I, I hope you're sure. Um, no. Well, they, no, they did it as sophomores. Where, in Santa Barbara? Ventura. Yeah, and so you were feeling a little out of it, and it was like, Alex, you go. Yeah, we had current invite the night before, and I, yeah. uh, we both ran four events there turned right over to Ventura, and he happened not to be in that race, and I did, and I was like, it's all you. Go ahead. Because, I mean, no <laughs> offense, man. I can't tell the two of you apart when you guys are together. It's all right. Coach has seen me every day for, like, what, four years now, and he just figured it out at the beginning of the season. So, What's the uh, What's the tell? Yeah, what is the tell? You're going to have to ask someone else that knows us apart because I really – like, when people ask me, I'm like, I have no idea. Now, do you ever huh. look at pictures – now, to be honest, do you ever look at pictures from the past and go – is that me or is that Alex? I have no idea which one I was as a baby. Boom. I don't feel so bad. <laughs> All right. I, can I don't feel that. as bad now. Good deal. Good deal. Uh, Curtis, you, you, uh, I, I, I mentioned it. Isaac Trevino winning a state title last year, a local guy. You ran against him a lot. You ran against Blake Haney early in your career a little bit. How, how has that honed you as an 800 runner now looking for your own championships? Um, first, it started with Ivan. and uh, just Yeah, Ivan from, from Ridgeview as well. Yes, sure. Ivan talked to me and uh, told me um, that I'm going to be something great in the future. So, like, it helped me a lot from that day one. And then sophomore year, um, Trevino came out. And whenever he made a name, I was like, wow. And then Blake came on and ran. And then last year, I've seen him just do big things. I mean... I want to be the next one to do it, so that's I stepped up a lot this year and worked a lot, like a lot harder than I have ever. So yeah, there's a lot of motivation in there for sure. Uh, it, when you look forward at the next six weeks, obviously I think at this point you're the favorite in the section. It's safe to say that Peter Handy of BHS is number two, and Tanner Root of, of uh, Frontier number three. So it's all Kern County, and actually good on number four. Uh, yeah, Moses Medrano of uh, of Highland is number four. So if you can win the county it seems sure as heck seems like you can win the section but beyond that uh are, are you looking at state championship i mean what what are your goals beyond that uh yeah of course i mean the state championship has to be in your mind you can't just go in there just trying to get a medal because that's just not the mindset i have for myself anyways mm -hmm. and uh i'm just trying to get back to being healthy and just getting out there and competing because i still got a long way to go so julia and these guys had pretty high expectations coming into this season i think a defending section champion and the guy who was the top returning runner, obviously. You were a little more unheralded, I guess we'll say, it, and, and here you are 12 feet, only a few inches behind the section leader. Uh, you, you said it before that 
it kind of feels like anything else is icing on the cake. Do you feel like maybe there's a big uh, a big clearance for you coming up that where you could you could really surprise people? Yeah, I think so. Lately, I've been working a lot on technique, which that's my biggest issue is the whole technique of the pole vault. Mm -hmm. And so it, once I get that down, I should be getting another six inches to a foot. Are you breaking in a new pole? Um, yes, no. I, well, okay, so my 13-130, that's kind of like my big pole at the moment. I just blew through that at my last meet. What is that blue? Do you, does that mean you broke it? No. It oh. means like it just doesn't I maxed out the energy to where it doesn't really oh, help I me see anymore that. because I put too much strength into it. So she I'm doesn't get that same I'm kind so of velocity. Yeah. It, it doesn't give me like the same pop. Right. Up. Yeah. It once you're when it here, bends and springs out. Basically. Yeah. Once you yeah. get up to about here, it, when you say it pops, it doesn't give you that velocity to kind of get that extra umph over the bar. I see. And so she's kind of just. And you know, just watching you right now, really, we need to do. John, can we do? Can we do school. B Varsity Live with Trevor Paul? I pole vaulted in high school. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I want to see a reprise. No, not anymore. No, I won't do that either. I will not high jump. I will not do anything until my back gets better, John. Okay, well, when your back gets better, we're doing both. Okay, uh, sorry, right. Julianne. Uh, so, so you're breaking in a new pole. Maybe there's more in there. It sounds like um, you, you got to kind of like that spot where nobody ne necessarily expects you to do anything, but you feel like there's more there. Yeah, it's – I don't know. It's more like because I know that, then it's like, well – I want to show everyone off that I can do mm -hmm. this. Like, I want to show them just be like the underdog and be like, "Hey, I've been hiding, but I'm gonna get you." So. Well, we'll we'll doubt you for your uh, for your own benefit. All right. Okay. Uh, Trevor, Thank you. Be sure to doubt Julianne. <laughs> Before we end this segment, I want to go ahead and commend all three of you because you were probably three of the most cordial and nicest kids that I've met since being here in Bakersfield. And it's been a pleasure to work with all three of you over the last two years. And congratulations on everything you guys have done so far. And being nice Thank to you. Trevor is a really difficult thing to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you guys. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, though. Uh, we'll be right back. I'm going to fire Trevor real quick. This is Ben Hibbert, Curtis Raquel, Julianne Finch. Uh, keep going, guys. Uh, thanks for being here, and, uh, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. We'll be right back on B-Varsity Live. <laughs>